Hi, welcome to the training on soft updates for tenant dial plan. My name is Agus Rahman. I am a senior customer engineering architect based out of Sydney, Australia, and I am part of the Skype customer experience and deployment team. If you have been watching the soft training series thus far, I would expect for you to be familiar with soft already. For those joining for the first time, you can get further information about SOF from skypeoperationframework.com. SOF is a living framework, and we continue to work on updating the assets and delivering new offers. Your feedback drives the update to SOF, and please use our feedback channels listed here to share your thoughts and ideas. This is April 2017 version of this training. Due to the ever-changing nature of Skype for Business Online and SOF, I would like to point out that things may have changed upon watching this training. For most recent up-to-date trainings, go to skypeoperationfarmo.com slash academy. We also have the soft community as part of developing the multifaceted approach to soft. We'd love to hear from you on how you are applying soft to your projects and share lessons learned from the field. Let's get to the training on soft updates for tenant dial plan. This training is intended to provide you with information on what has been updated in SOF to include tenant dial plan as part of a plan, deliver, and operate journey towards customer success with Skype for Business Online. This training will highlight specific updates in SOF that will help you identify organization's requirements for customized dialing behavior such as short-digit dialing. Prior to the availability of tenant dial plan, a default surface level dial plan is assigned to Cloud PBX user based on user location. If users in the organization is ready to embrace the new way of work, such as click to dial, then typically Cloud PBX implementation effort will have a focus on end user awareness and training towards the use of a soft one client. We've seen success on this approach in the market. However, we also recognize that some organizations are not ready to deal with both tool change from desktop phone to soft phone and behavioral change uh, from short digit dialing to E164 dialing or click to call. And this is where tenant dial plan will come into play. To cater for that in this training, we will go through important aspects of planning and implementation of tenant dial plan. The reason we are doing this training is for you to be able to take advantage of tenant dial plan as part of the soft journey that the organization you are working with is taking. Prior to the availability of tenant dial plan during the plan phase, in the past you would address the requirements for customized dialing behavior by holding off migration for users that depend on such call capabilities or address the change from management and readiness point of view. Now, equipped with technical knowledge on tenant dial plan, you should be able to use the updated soft assets to bring about the additional capabilities offered by Scaffolds Online and identify and assess the customized dialing behavior requirements of the organization that you're working with. When the requirements are considered critical to the success of the project, then you can use the updated assets to plan for the implementation of tenant dial plan. By providing existing PBX dialing behavior as part of the overall solution, you will have a greater chance to drive the cloud PBX implementation or migration towards successful adoption by reducing the efforts to retrain end users. This training is delivered with the assumption that you have thorough understanding of SOF, all the phases, activities, and assets. If not, I would strongly recommend that you take the previous soft trainings available through Skype Academy so that you can relate to what will be discussed later on. We have released specific technical trainings for tenant dial plan that delve into the capabilities in detail via Skype Academy. I would recommend, again, strongly for you to consume that training prior to taking this one, as we are not going to talk about the capabilities in detail. The expected outcome of this training is for you to be able to incorporate tenant dial plan as part of a soft journey through the phases 
in related activities and leverage the assets that have been updated for tenant dial plan. Let's talk about tenant dial plan briefly in the context of soft journey. Tenant dial plan provides organizations with customized dial plan in Sky for Business online service. By implementing tenant dial plan, users can retain the existing dialing behavior such as not requiring to dial full E164 number to dial among users in the same office or use country code and area code to dial external parties in the same city. Similar to how dial plan was implemented in Skype for Business on-premises, tenant dial plan uses normalization rules. And up to 25 normalization rules are supported per dial plan. This means you must define normalization rules efficiently using regular expression. Tenant dial plan will be useful for Cloud PBS implementations with PSTN calling or with on-premises PSN connectivity via cloud connector, since previously these deployment types depend on surface level dial plan. For Cloud TBX with on-premises PSN connectivity via existing pool, they may not require tenant dial plan on the get-go since this deployment type support using the on-premises dial plan for Cloud TBX users. If the organization that you are working with is planning to transition to full cloud-based solution, then existing dial plan configuration can be converted into tenant dial plan and start using tenant dial plan to be prepared for the cutover in the future. Touching briefly on tenant dial plan, there are three types of dial plans in Sky for Business Online. The surface dial plan, the tenant global dial plan, and the tenant user dial plan. Surface dial plan is the default dial plan assigned to users based on location and they cannot be modified. Tenant dial plan, it comes in two flavors. The first one is the tenant global dial plan, which is a customizable dial plan that applies to all users in the tenant. Possibly this will work for small organizations or where the dial plan can be designed as such that one dial plan can cover the requirements of all users across the organization. And number two is the tenant user dial plan. It is a customizable dial plan that can be assigned user per user basis, allowing different dialing behavior for users across different locations. Hierarchy of dial plan is important when planning tenant dial plan implementation. Unlike Scaf for Business on-premises, where the most specific or the lowest dial plan in the hierarchy will apply, tenant dial plan will merge with surface dial plan with either the tenant global or tenant user dial plan before the resulting dial plan is assigned to a user. By understanding this concept, you should be able to avoid duplicating existing normalization rules when planning the tenant dial plan implementation. With a small introduction of the capability out of the way, let's talk about the changes in the plan phase assets. First off, the Skype for Business Overview and Features Comparison Matrix found in Envisioning Architecture Workshop Deck and the Detailed Design Workshop Deck have been updated to reflect the new additions to Skype for Business Online capabilities with regards to tenant dial plan in addressing customized dialing behavior or extension dialing requirements. The extension dialing requirement or customized dialing behavior specifically also have been acknowledged as no longer a blocker across various soft assets such as readiness assessment evaluation. And templates for tenant dial plan configuration have been added to the detailed design deck and the template document to facilitate design exercise for implementation of tenant dial plan. These updates should allow you to bring up the attention to the availability of the customized dialing behavior via tenant dial plan when going through the Envisioning Architecture Workshop or the Detailed Design Workshop. After further assessment of the organizational requirements by leveraging both the available slides on the topic and also your own technical readiness gained through the technical training via SCAP Academy, and it is found that customized dialing behavior to be a hard requirement 
for the Cloud PBX implementation, you can use the configuration templates in the detailed design workshop and document template to work through the planning for implementation of tenant dial plan. Here is the planning guidance for tenant dial plan. For step one, it can be performed against test or pilot user to validate the effective dial plan configuration to find out the included normalization rules to be able to assess the delta between what normalization rules are available by default and what's more needed, if there's any. For step two, it is typically performed once. If tenant global dial plan is deemed sufficient and can accommodate the requirements for the whole organization, then tenant global dial plan can be selected. Otherwise, tenant user dial plan will be required and typically it is created for each individual user group based on their location. For step three, it is where you define the additional normalization rules required to support the organization's requirements. Some guidance here is to avoid or minimize duplication with service dial plan. Uh, ensure that the normalization rule is really, really required, given there is a limit of 25 rules per, per dial plan. And for existing on-premises deployment, you can use the existing dial plan configurations as basis to decide the normalization rules required in tenant dial plan configuration minus duplicated rules from surface dial plan, obviously. If the existing dial plans are not complex and each does not exceed the normalization rules limit, you might consider recreating them using a sample PowerShell script that will be provided later. If coming from traditional PBX, then you need to manually collect all the existing rules and create the corresponding dial plans and normalization rules in Skype for Business Online. As for the step four, it is where you decide a common pattern for dial plan names for easy identification. The following is the example of the default surface dial plans for Singapore and Australia. They came as the default dial plans assigned to users using Singapore and Australia as location. In Singapore, since it is a relatively small country, there is no concept of long distance dialing, and therefore it is not reflected there. Australia is definitely larger with multiple states with multiple area codes, so long distance normalization rules will be there. Note that for Australia, the default rule expects area code to be entered, which is not common, thus this default rule may not work unless end users are taught to dial with area code prefix or prefix by zero and area code. This is just one example of where the default surface dial plan may require additional training to be provided to end users to make it work. Here is the example of tenant dial plan configurations that you can deploy in your tenant. Note the example of naming convention which comprise of country code, when applicable the state, then the city, and then the office code. You would typically use this format when there is short digit dialing within an office. For the Australian example, there is a local normalization rules to cater for eight-digit local dialing that would be familiar with most end users. Notice also the omission of international dialing normalization rules. It is intentional since it is already covered by the service dial plan that will be merged automatically with the tenant dial plan. These two dial plan examples are provided as starting point for you to use based on the organization's requirements. In terms of copying existing on-premises dial plans and converting them to tenant dial plan, the example script here can be used. Generally, what you would do is to export on-premises dial plan to CSV or XML file, iterate through the export file while storing the normalization rules in memory, and then recreate the dial plan with its normalization rules as tenant dial plan. There are other ways to approach this and feel free to experiment on your own. Moving on, let's talk about the changes and deliver phase assets. In this release, deployment checklist, site rollout and migration planning assets, bulk enablement and migration script, and testing metrics have been updated to guide the project team along the way in implementing tenant dial plan from deployment 
migration to testing. The updates can be considered minor. However, we expect they will help you to be ready to deliver projects that have tenant dial plan as part of the solution. I would recommend for you to download the latest soft assets and see for yourself the changes we made to incorporate tenant dial plan as part of the soft journey. I want to bring up the updates that we've made to the site rollout and migration questionnaire. Notice the added tenant dial plan column uh, in the users tab. This worksheet is used to list user details for an upcoming rollout and migration. And by adding the new tenant dial plan column, you can use this to include specific tenant dial plan to be assigned to the particular user. If left blank, then the default surface dial plan will be used instead. Once the worksheet is populated, the button to prepare input and notification files for the selected users will generate input CSV file that can be used by the bulk enablement and migration script provided as part of the soft assets, facilitating the assignment of tenant dial plan as part of the user enablement and migration. To sum up, through this training, I hope now you understand the updates to soft assets to include tenant dial plan as part of the solution for Cloud PBS implementation or migration. From planning to deployment, there are assets that will facilitate the design decisions, track deployment or migration completion, and assist with bulk user enablement or migration. Based on your technical understanding of tenant dial plan, either briefly from this training or in-depth from Skype Academy technical training content, you should have full understanding on how to match surface capabilities versus technical and organizational requirements and assist the organization that you're working with to make the right decisions related to their customized dialing behavior requirements. From the perspective of SAW plan deliver operate, through this training, you should have the level of understanding on how to plan and implement hand and dial plan. These are the resources that you can take advantage of to strengthen your understanding of SAW, keep up to date with what's happening with SAW, and last but not least, Keep yourself up to date with the technical in-depth training contents from Skype Academy. Thank you very much. Until next time.